Mm-hmm. But when I, when I when I learned more about hardware in that course, that digital uh, logic course, it kind of sparked a little bit of an interesting uh, thought process for me, where I could think about the hardware side as well as be on the intersection of software and hardware, because you can see how software is, uh, you know, you could see how it's actually executed on hardware. Mm-hmm. You could see software is converted into instructions and yeah. eventually gone through the, the pipelines of your hardware. And I think something that further uh, reinforced that was uh, was graduate school. I, I, took, I did grad school and I had a computer architecture course actually. And the computer architecture course uh, was to design a five-stage pipeline or a five-stage uh, CPU. Wow. Uh, MIPS, MIPS was the instruction set architecture. I thought it was just, I thought it was fascinating. And I poured so many hours trying to understand why, you know, why do we have to program the hardware this way? Why do we have to, um, why do I have to have feedback loops? Why do I have to have certain XOR gates in certain locations? And, yeah. you know, and, and I thought it was just, you know, very fascinating and very intriguing. And I kind of embraced that. Okay, you know what? I could, I could, I could see myself doing this for, for my career. Now it is a little bit of a niche space mm-hmm. because it's, you know, it's hardware descriptive languages, right? A lot of what I do on a day-to-day basis is system Verilog, Verilog. Uh, in, in Europe, they use the VHDL most of the time. Uh, these are probably technologies that you've come across and, and you know, audience members in the podcast have, I've heard about so, and then I also use UVM. UVM is sort of a methodology that I um, that I also uh, revolve around. That's universal verification methodology of of how we actually, uh, you know, verify our designs and whatnot. I'll get into more, obviously, uh, more of my role in a little bit. Awesome. I mean, th- th- that sounds so fascinating. And can you like just briefly describe any of the difference oh. like between a software engineer role versus a hardware engineer role? What is the like the main difference? Yeah. Totally, totally. Uh, fundamentally, I believe, you know, there, there, there's definitely a lot of commonalities. Uh, they're both, you know, tech-oriented roles, obviously. Uh, software engineering is a little bit more about the abstract nature of, of, of programming, right? So a lot of the fundamental technologies used in software engineering, uh, engineering roles are the higher level languages that we're accustomed to, right? We've, we're very accustomed to Python and C++ and Java, you know, these are all languages that we've come across uh, in, in in our career so far. Uh, and that what that is, is really a software descriptive language.